It is a name as well known on Wall Street as on Main Street. A name so instantly recognized that it is meaningful to both young and old. It is a name of such immense proportion that it no longer merely embodies an identity. Instead, it speaks to a phenomenon that is understood simultaneously in third world villages and financial world capitals. As the 20th century nears an end, this grandson of a tobacco sharecropper is arguably one of the world's most celebrated heroes. Michael Jordan entered the American sports culture with dead-on accuracy and perfect timing. What Jordan achieved in 15 years as a player of the game seems now oddly incidental to all that he is away from that game. We live in a country and in a society and a world where people are looking for a hero. We had a need for a hero, and I think that that's the thing that Michael has been able to supply. Well, I think it's very simple. I think you want to be part of his team. I think you want to, in some way, be playing next to him. His celebrity transcends many of the boundaries that might have stopped sports idols of past generations from rising higher. He's the man who walks in the air. Michael Jordan is, is the magician. He's this symbol of someone who can do things the rest of us can't do. Perhaps because Jordan was so captivating between the narrow dimensions of a basketball floor, we are only now awakening to the magnitude of the many components of the man. Michael Jordan, off court. Michael Jordan's public identity was almost entirely linked to live performance. The essence of the man was hidden behind his arsenal of dazzling, seemingly effortless signature moves. Michael had a tremendous professional pride. Uh, I'd never seen a player when I got to this ball club as an assistant coach who could uh, have a bad game and be positive and optimistic and turn it around. Bad game, 25 points, you know, 15 for 35 you know, or whatever, 10 for 25 was a bad game for him. Turn it around, next game, come right back and attack. The characteristics that have made him and most people that are great famous is, number one, he was a great student of the game. He sat at the front of the class. He always had questions, and he listened intently. Uh, he listened with his eyes as well as his ears. Um, he was a team player. Team was first and uh, nothing was ever done at the expense of the team. Very few people that I've ever seen worked as hard. I don't know if anybody's ever worked any harder. So he always, I mean, every drill, he practiced to win. And I think that's how come, you know, he learned how to win. I think for, for myself watching him, he's definitely a result of hard work. You know, where you could end up if you just be determined to be the best at everything that you do. And I think Michael Jordan had that mindset of not only finishing first in everything, but finishing first with his team involved as well. You can find a lot of guys who have hands as big as Michael. You can find a lot of guys who probably can run faster than Michael. You can find some guys who can jump higher than Michael. But you cannot find a lot of people, if any, who utilize that talent. Michael Jordan was unquestionably a self-starter. He didn't need anybody to push him at all. I think he also was the kind of guy who examined himself to see what kind of abilities did he have and never accepted anything less than perfection. Indeed, Jordan's intensity out of uniform was disarming to those unaccustomed to seeing it. Jordan's approach is always black and white. There is being the best and there is failure. No middle ground. This applied to golf, shoe design, and on the court trash talk, which he elevated to an art form. 
this is a guy that I sincerely believe that if you were going to play jacks with him, he'd want to beat you. But not only would he want to beat you, he'd want to talk about you while he was beating you. And he'll kid with you like, I came up to him once, we were at a fundraising affair where he was donating an awful lot of money to the community. He waved and greeted me because I walked in and I gave the sign like I was playing golf and told him, come on. And I looked at him and his whole frame of mind changed and he looked at me and said, you play golf? And I told him, no. <laughs> well, Michael, uh, I knew him when he was playing the Tar Heels and I was coaching University of Arkansas and we beat them one time when uh, they were number one. And uh, every time he sees me, he says, I haven't forgot, I, I haven't forgiven yet, coach, for beating us. People literally are afraid of letting him down. He is so demanding. The other key to that is he never put demands on other people that he would not put on himself. And he put those demands on himself first and then turned and expected other people to step up mentally to be ready to compete. What we had to tell Michael was he had to share the spotlight with guys and that he had to include his other teammates. Even sometimes when they would back away and wanted him to take it over, he had to thrust the 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 action back on them so that they would have to make the plays and he made players like Scotty and Horace better players over the course of his career. The fire within was sparked early on even before his adolescent growth spurt that would change everything. Michael went from survivor to fierce competitor. This attitude shaped his outlook even after he became a sports celebrity. He hasn't changed. Uh, with all the fame, the fortune, uh, everything that's come to him, he's still uh, just the same guy that uh, I remember as a young college player and a young pro when I first got to know him. Well, I taught Mike, Mike actually all he knows in one week of basketball at the uh, McDonald's uh, All-American game when he was a senior in high school. Uh, I never had heard about him. And we went to play this all-star game, and all of a sudden I'm introduced to this uh, young kid, Michael Jordan. Well, it was obvious uh, from the time that I first saw him that he was going to be, I mean, like, unbelievable. And the thing was that in those days, you know, when he was playing, he did everything just really fundamentally, nothing fancy, but he always knew how to win and make the big shot. And in fact, the McDonald's All-American game, team he played on, won 96-95. He made the last six baskets in the game, and every time we were down by one. So if Michael had the ball last, we were going to win. And of course, that's been the story of his life. Everybody knew that he was a fine player, but I don't think anybody had any idea that he would become what he became. You just don't imagine a person becoming that good. And, and he just you know, went beyond everybody's expectation, whereas they expected him to be good, but I don't think anybody expected him to be as sensational as he became. What I really don't want to recollect is in 1982, in New Orleans National Championship game, Georgetown University is playing against University of North Carolina. Michael Jordan happened to be a freshman at that time, so we call time out. It's about 14 seconds or so left in the ball game, so you're figuring that they're going to go to James Worthy because James Worthy is the upperclassman, the guy who's been in the middle of killing us. And uh, they come out of the huddle and throw the ball to the left sideline to this freshman. He sails up something, he's almost out of bounds near the bench, and whoosh, they go ahead of us. And so I have a horrible memory of Michael Jordan. I call it a nightmare, but it, it was indicative of the fact that uh, this kid's courage and his confidence, and even more so, I think, it showed the confidence of Coach Smith in a freshman, because you just don't get in the national championship game and let a freshman take a shot when you're behind with seconds to go in a ball game. And not only do you let him do it, he comes out and swishes the shot. So that reflects the fact that this kid, even then, had a lot of courage and a lot of willingness to lead and to take over. He's a phenomenon. And Michael Jordan just took it to another level because people were able to trace the history of him, actually watch him grow um, through the media. Going to North Carolina, making the great shot in that national championship game, and then to go on to Chicago or the Olympics, and winning Olympics, I know Bobby Knight coached him and thought he's one of the greatest players he's ever witnessed, and it certainly is, I think, the best to ever play the game. Michael Jordan's influence as an athlete even transcends gender. 
And women who play basketball look up to Michael like no other, not only for what he has meant to the game, but for the doors he opens for women who play the sport. Mike has always been supportive of the women's game. Um, and I, you know, I've always, you know, Mike and I kind of grew up in the same time. We received the Naismith Award together. Um, and, and Mike's always been a big fan of women's basketball. Every basketball player, you know, male and female, look up to Michael Jordan. I know I do, and we've all tried to do his moves and <laughs> try to catch the mare like he does. But it just seems like Michael is always intense and always mentally prepared, no matter what the circumstances are. And that's something that I think, you know, sets him apart from any other player. His rise to the top, he talked about how he became the best player in the country. He didn't talk about it. He just went out there and worked every day and, and tried to become the best, and he did it quietly. I think Michael's been a, a great role model for women. There's, there's no one that's had a greater impact on the game uh, than Michael Jordan. I think you watch him play, and he plays with such a passion. He is best when the game is on the line. He plays and has a lot of fun playing, and I think, I, I think the women watch him, and they know that you know, basketball is hard work but it's not anything that you can't go out and, and compete at and be successful at if you're willing uh, to, to lay it on the line. And while Michael leaves his mark, his influence has encouraged and inspired his competitors, his fans, and the stars of tomorrow. Who got hats go? Jordan. Jordan hat, huh? Whatever color, uh, whatever socioeconomic background you came from, poor people, rich people, he made it fun. And I think a lot of kids particularly, you know, have started playing the game of basketball because they saw that you could have fun playing it. There's a generation uh, of uh, young players across the globe seeking to emulate Michael Jordan. That's what humans do. They emulate one another. And Michael Jordan is the front row human being to emulate in the late 20th century. He's everywhere on every product. And so we have a generation trying to be Michael Jordan. On a basketball court, Michael Jordan has a knack of seeing everything around him, processing the information and making the right decisions in a blink of an eye. Give him the luxury of time to choose, and Jordan is even more dangerous. Witnesses many triumphs as a business entity. When he decided it was time to star in a big budget Hollywood production, the film Space Jam generated close to $500 million in combined box office and video sales. It's different. I mean, it's just, I appreciate what people do, other actors do for a living, have a better understanding. Will I do this forever? Or will I do this full time? I don't think so. <laughs> when the designer Bijan inquired about a Jordan Cologne, Jordan not only agreed, but dove right into the development process. In less than a year, the cologne sales surpassed $150 million. It wasn't long before Jordan fully embraced the fundamentals of capital expansion. So it hardly set off shockwaves this year when Jordan began exploring an ownership opportunity with the NBA's Charlotte Hornets in his native North Carolina. I think he would make a marvelous owner. I think, though, that he, again, is a very, very tough competitor. He really has never brooked much in the way of uh, uh, a laggard attitude among uh, teammates. Uh, he really has an ability, as I said in Blood on the Horns, Michael really has an ability to actually just up the level of an intensity across the entire organization, from the lowliest employee right up into the boardroom. Even his passion for golf leans towards mixing business and pleasure. Jordan's participation in pro-ams draws large galleries and VIP foursomes. Before a Chicago area PGA senior tour event last summer, Jordan teed it up with the corporate elite. At the 1992 Summer Olympics in Spain, Jordan participated as a member of the original Dream Team, arguably the greatest team ever assembled. You can't get too close to Michael, it's a foul. Hey. <laughs> you haven't committed a foul in almost a year and a half, man. How can you talk? <laughs> My goodness. 
don't think you ever found out of a game. When do you ever found out of a game? <laughs> Michael, what about playing with Magic? First time, you know, to play with a lot of these guys in a competitive situation. I played with them in All Stars and, and, and against them, and uh, now we rep represent one basically, and we represent the country that we are from, which is the United States, and we're going over and. We're in a very competitive situation, and it's a prize at the end. So I think I'm looking forward to the, you know, the camaraderie ship that's going to be established over this uh, five-week period, and uh, it's going to be something fun. But a conflict was ensuing. Jordan led the Nike forces into battle with Reebok. Jordan, under contract to Nike, took the bold step of using a prop no less sacred than the American flag draped over his shoulder to conceal Reebok's logo on his Olympic team warm-up jacket. Proving no relationship has been more important to Jordan than Nike. And the pot of gold materialized in 1998. Control of his own brand backed by the Nike marketing machine. Jordan's shoes and apparel did more than 300 million in sales in year one. And now other pro stars are also signing on to wear the brand exclusively. The appetite to create is an unbelievable uh, ambition. In, in, in creating a basketball shoe that suits a lot of the people. Uh, I think that will continue. That's never going to stop, even from not playing basketball. I think that appetite to create continues on. And certainly it's a competitive thing to constantly find things that the, the, that the fans and the public can could uh, identify with. Uh, and, and I look forward to that. Heading into a new century, Jordan's empire is indeed vast. His ventures include the successful Michael Jordan's restaurant in Chicago, the trendy 160 Blue, an upscale eatery near the United Center Arena, the Michael Jordan Golf Company, and more. While the NBA nears the end of its first season of the post-Jordan era, the rumored return of Jordan to the league as a team owner is creating a new buzz around Michael. Consider being part of ownership. No. I would fire too many people if I'm on <laughs> If Jordan secures a controlling ownership in an NBA city, the impact will be considerable. He will insist on a team that is profitable, and of course, he will insist on winning at least six NBA titles. I think he'll find a way to win, the way he coped with uh, the struggles of the Chicago Bulls. I think he uh, has learned tremendously from his associations with Phil Jackson and people like Tex Winter uh, and even people like Jerry Reinsdorf. And I think Michael is a very crafty competitor, uh, and I think that he will find a way to make that drive work for him. As Jordan surveys a horizon of unlimited possibilities, the NBA must identify the next generation that will allow the league to sustain its global popularity. Oh, I think it's already uh, very uh, evident that uh, he's sorely missed uh, uh, in so many different ways. You know, he was the main man, and uh, regardless of where he played, I think that was what uh, everybody wanted to see. They wanted to see the best basketball players ever play the game. Basketball is going to have to retrench. There is a molting period. Uh, I, I think it would be safe to assume that, that the unparalleled growth that Michael brought is going to cool a bit for basketball. Plus the effects of the lockout are, are substantial. But I think the NBA is a healthy business. The owners have a good agreement. Uh, I've spent a lot of time over the last few years interviewing young players, watching what's going on with them and their lives and looking at their competitive natures. And there's some interesting players out there. Is, is it going to be Camelot again this golden time? No. But will the NBA uh, survive and thrive? Yes. It's going to be really difficult. Uh, I know they'll probably push some people into that position, a Grand Hill or somebody. Uh, that will unfairly be, you know, try to measure up, but uh, it's going to be an important part of their marketing. And of course, coming back from the lockout season, they're going to need to do it real fast. Hopefully, some of those young kids that started to play because of him and the love that he transferred to them, I think what happens is he planted many seeds. And I think you're going to see some of those seeds grow and develop. And because of Michael Jordan, I think there'll be another one. Ready and I'm Michael Jordan. You've been briefed. Michael Jordan elevated sports marketing from its infancy in the 1980s 
to one of the truly dynamic industries of the 90s. Never has one individual converged so perfectly with the right place and the right time. And action. The way that he was plugged in to other markets besides sports was pathbreaking. A company in the future, when a Michael Jordan of the future comes along, will perceive it as less of a risk to base an entire advertising campaign or a product line around an athlete because he really did demonstrate that it was possible to do that. Let's face it, Michael Jordan was not only a great athlete, a great spokesperson, but he was the central character in the days of our lives and the drama. And so we essentially could pick up any commercial and Michael would step right in and it, he would already be in context. The reason uh, Michael Jordan is, is so effective um, at marketing is because he's himself. And so as a result, corporate uh, people and people from all around the world want a piece of that because they know that it's going to help them sell things and market things. The association with Michael Jordan is, is something that obviously is unbeatable. I think all the ads that I've done with it have shown bits and pieces of my personality, which has been good, you know, because if guns it's, it's taken me away from just basketball, but deals a lot with the, you know, a lot of my inner thoughts, some of my feelings about the game and how I approach the game and how I approach life. And uh, this doesn't change. I think it adds to that, the opportunity to excel or achieve. And, I mean, I've done that in such a short amount of time, and somehow I've, I've always been able to sustain that. Though impossible to comprehend now, Nike's decision to sign Jordan to an endorsement deal in 1984 was considered something of a gamble. The Bulls were not yet a dominant team, and Jordan was not yet a dominant player, despite moments of brilliance. The gamble continues to pay off. I, I think he had an agent who understood what Michael was, this incredible talent he had. I'm not talking about jumping and shooting. Those things are there, but, but I mean Michael's ability to connect with people, this special presence he had. And then Nike had the foresight to, to see that and to uh, come forward with a very attractive offer to build an, an entire uh, product line around Michael. All-time sales of Jordan products by Nike have grossed about $2.6 billion, which accounts for less than one-third of Jordan's estimated $10 billion impact on the U.S. economy. You reflect on what kind of pressure that places on him, what kind of responsibility that places on him, and being responsible for thousands and thousands of people having jobs indirectly. Forget what he does directly, indirectly. Well, the Michael Jordan effect has been vastly overstated. The way people come up with those numbers is that they, they attribute literally everything that touches professional basketball in large measure to Michael Jordan. And then they assume that the gross effect of the National Basketball Association on the economy is just simply adding up all the dollars that pass through it. And, of course, that's a, a wild exaggeration. Whatever the actual numbers, Jordan has earned roughly $240 million from endorsements the past decade. A huge sum, but arguably a bargain in contrast with his immeasurable impact on sales and product image. One reason he's so marketable, he's a good-looking guy. Uh, he's articulate. Uh, he, he just looks like the all-American young man that uh, we can all say, hey, that guy's something special. He's the ultimate symbol of competence in the world. And the level of competence he brought, uh, not just to basketball, but how he handles himself, how he has addressed the public for so many years, th that has created this very special connection with a variety of publics, globally, locally, everywhere. And Jordan is as versatile as a pitch man as he is with a basketball. Coca-Cola, Gatorade, General Mills, Wheaties relied on Jordan's stature to enhance an image of market leadership. While the Nikes, Wilsons, Oakleys, and Rayovacs counted on Jordan to spark dramatic sales increases. In many cases, because he and he alone could command 10-year contracts, Jordan will continue his association with many of these companies well into the future. Jordan endorsements are often merely fueled by consumer momentum. Consider NBA licensed merchandise. Though he does not appear in any form specifically promoting fan purchase of jerseys and caps, 
Jordan and the Bulls at their peak are believed to have generated up to half of the NBA's total revenue in this area. During his playing career, NBA licensed product sales climbed from an annual blip of $44 million to about $3 billion. The Nike relationship remains intact as the flagship component of the Jordan empire, having evolved from the original cutting-edge TV spots of the mid-80s to a standalone Michael Jordan brand, the only Nike products without the famous swoosh symbol. The Jordan brand generated more than $380 million in sales in its first year. There is no denying the impact of Michael Jordan's Midas touch. Michael is still in the game, and he will be for several years because it'll take a while uh, before we all forget him and start wondering about the next ones. So he will be the centerpiece of lots and lots and lots of advertising and product endorsement and media attention for several years. I think kids still buzz about him. His products move off smoke off the shelf. So I think as long as we can find distinct and fresh ways to present him, we should ride him as long as possible. During his playing career, Michael Jordan was the subject of newspaper or magazine stories an average of 100 times per day. His life and times are documented in some 70 books, including four he has authored with a collaborator. What Walter and what Mark actually told me was just be myself, and they just wanted to see that over a year's period and get inside the doors that I've probably kept closed for a while, and uh, I just had to live. He has appeared in celebrated television commercials. In fact, the Jordan mystique has no equal among societal superstars, past or present. Internationally, I mean, he is just... He's larger than life and larger than sport. He's, it's not just a basketball thing. I think he's a way to really help develop the brand um, in, in countries where either basketball or sport is not all that developed. I think we live in a country and in a society and a world where people are looking for a hero. Uh, so much so that many, many years ago we created heroes inaccurately that we had a need for a hero and I think that that's the thing that Michael has been able to supply for us the fact that here is a person who we can see him develop a lot of our heroes in the past we had to be told about how they develop going on two years old huh show me your big old hands be some big hands man. Michael had obviously the talent he had the drive he had this incredible will uh, all of those things add up to a very special genius. He's bright, and he has a good personality, and he doesn't get in trouble. Uh, so he's someone that you genuinely have a natural liking to. He doesn't come on as an arrogant, spoiled child like lots of athletes and lots of movie stars or rock stars do. So he combines this unusual ability with an attractive personality. And anybody who has that attribute uh, the, the country is certainly ready for them, and they will be a media darling for as long as they want to be. Who else can dominate so completely in the athletic arena? Be at ease on a golf course with presidents and CEOs, or address an assembly of captivated school children. Jordan has a million dollar smile an exacting sense of sartorial style, and when needed, a quick wit. <laughs> well, you know what? You can't be throwing like a wimp. You catch it? I can get that. Try it one time. See? Okay, but Greg, it's got to be there. He readily alternates from the highbrow lobster and champagne circuit to grape soda and honey buns with old friends and family in Carolina. The Jordan image is even powerful enough to deflect perceived flaws that would damage mere mortals. We've got to remember that Michael also is human. You know, we have got to be smart enough to give him the space that he needs to make a mistake. The mistake that he needs to do the things that normal people do. 
because we have the need ourselves for someone as special as he has become. We still have got to have the courtesy and the humanism in ourselves to realize that we're not talking about a God, we're just talking about a tremendously special person. If you think of all the situations Michael Jordan has been in over his career, all the places where people have shoved microphones into his faces, where they've asked him to comment on various events, uh, you look at all of those circumstances, the opportunity for him to misspeak, to say something terrible, uh, there are just numerous opportunities, and each and every time he has fielded those just like he's posting up in the lane, faking left and going right. And while some find fault with Jordan's apolitical reputation, no one could question his demonstrative social responsibility. The Michael Jordan Celebrity Golf Tournaments have contributed more than one and a half million dollars to North Carolina Ronald McDonald houses. He also teamed up with Olympic legend Jackie Joyner Kersey to promote Nike's program Play, participate in the lives of America's youth. Jackie Jordan and myself basically tried to get going, uh, co-chaired, and, and, and Ignite was an opportunity to give kids an outlet. Whatever pressures they may deal with away from sports, you know, either in their lives or amongst their families or academically, educationally, whatever, let this be a means to take your mind away from them for a little while just so you can clear your mind and somehow deal with that problem once you go back and give yourself a good outlet to make it or to do something that you choose to do or chase your dreams or, or, or your goals. I don't think people should eliminate that because that's very important. I mean, it was a great motivational factor for me uh, to, to achieve my goals of, of playing professional sports. If I didn't play professional sports, I got the opportunity to go to college and graduate. I think those are the things that get taken for granted in terms of the sports and the way kids view sports as a motivational factor. And Jordan frequently lends his considerable clout to a variety of charities, such as the Coach for Kids program and the Illinois Special Olympics. It is on these occasions that Jordan's down-home humility overshadows his social stature. In memory of his late father, the James R. Jordan Boys and Girls Club and Family Life Center is an inner-city oasis on Chicago's west side. Michael Jordan put up $2 million. The Chicago Bulls franchise donated $5 million. And countless millions are also generated for innumerable charities by donated items bearing Jordan's coveted autograph. Earlier this year, Jordan played a starring role in a Principal for a Day program in the Chicago public school system. Have you ever been to the principal's office? I am in the principal's office. I am the principal. And what can I do for you, sir? <laughs> I have an eight for No. You can have an apple and get out. <laughs> he spent five hours at a Chicago high school, pushing educational goals, meeting with student council members, and lunching with kids in the school cafeteria. Thank you. Thank you very much. Was it hard, like, going through school, like, putting time in your athleticism and uh, your study? Uh, I can't say, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you guys, that at certain points in my life when, you know, I, wa I wanted to get involved with sports that I didn't, you know, choose the wrong direction at one particular time where it affected my grades. But the good thing about it was my parents put me right back on track. And I learned from that mistake the first time, so I was able to deal with it the second time. But it, it, it's, it's hard, you know, but you have to stay focused in terms of what you're trying to achieve as an individual. Jordan clearly is committed to leveraging his fame for good causes, as evidenced by his belief in making golf readily accessible to young people in the inner city and to average Americans nationwide. Although his golf handicap is not likely to suffer in retirement, there clearly is a side of Jordan that gravitates toward community service. I'm a father of three, and uh, I care very much that there's role models out there that accept the position as a role model. Uh, it seems like everybody else is trying to push that label off and, and not expect to have to live up to something. But uh, he's not only been a role model for his family, but he's been a role model for a lot of other people's families. The Hills and the Bryants and the Hardaways of the world uh, emulate him. I think that's the single most uh, valuable legacy that Michael could leave, is that 
Uh, it's not enough to be a great athlete, but it's also a good thing to be a decent human being. What has always struck me as being uh, significant about Michael Jordan is, is off the court, you know, just upstanding, just a great guy, um, always willing, you know, to give to charities. What we've learned from Michael is that you can be competitive off the court, you can be a good person, you can be a great, you know, a great role model, and, and Mike's done it all, and you can be a shrewd businessman, and you can, you know, you can branch off to so many different areas of advertisement, <laughs> film, broadcasting, Mike can do it all, and he has done it all, and he's shown that, that, that anybody can do it as long as, as they, they have a vision, and Mike has always had great vision. Michael, I get to say thank you for 29 teams and hundreds of millions of fans around the world. Thank you for what you've meant to our game. Thank you for being who you were, not only for your leadership and greatness on the court, but for who you were and will continue to be off the court. The era of Jordan seemed to arrive like an unannounced swooping dunk, but just as suddenly, all that remains is the world's longest running highlight tape. His departure comes at a time of torch passing in all professional sports, with the exit of Wayne Gretzky, John Elway, and Cal Ripken not far behind. As competitors, each possessed a rare combination of swagger, zeal, and dignity. But Jordan's all-encompassing celebrity is uniquely his own. Well, I think, you know, on the floor, I don't think there'll ever be another Michael Jordan, uh, you know, similar to a Barishnikov in dancing or a Fred Astaire. Uh, he was special, and uh, I don't think there'll be anybody like him. But I think he sets a great standard for young people in terms of being a role model, uh, the way he carried himself with class and dignity, uh, his integrity. Uh, he was a, a tremendous example for young people to look up to. There are too few people that you can point to who have that kind of ability as a player who also manages their life in a manner in which you want to cite them. And I think that that was one of Michael's greatest gifts to the game, is the fact that not only was he special as a player, he also was a person who managed that specialness and handled his ego and realized his responsibility to be a role model to a lot of kids. We need heroes in our country today. And I think you could point to Michael Jordan with, if you had a child or a grandchild and say, hey, he's something special. And uh, I think that's what uh, maybe is missed as much as his playing is the fact that uh, he was one that everybody could point to and say that uh, regardless of how much money he's made, regardless of the fame that he's attained, he still uh, does it in such a classy manner. <laughs> The demands of pro basketball now behind him, Jordan has an unlimited range of options for the future by which to touch the lives of adults and children. For when the athletic ability, the superhuman aura, and the incomprehensible wealth are stripped away, Michael Jordan becomes even more appealing. I've, I've had a great time, and I, and I can't, I can't say enough for the people who supported me. And uh, well, my life will take a change. And a lot of people say, well, Michael Jordan didn't have any challenges away from the game of basketball. Well, I dispute that. You know, being a parent is very challenging. If you have kids, you know that. He is a product of parents who taught discipline and respect with actions, not words. He is fiercely loyal. And he owes everything to simple virtues. Trying harder, working longer, demanding more. Off the court, those virtues will continue to make Michael Jordan a revered figure for decades to come. There will be young players who will come along who will resonate Michael Jordan's special flair. And when they resonate his flair either by their accomplishments or by some sense of style they bring to what they do, it's going to send us back and remind us of what Michael did in that special time. What Michael Jordan saw was an a lot of opportunity. First of all, he was helping individuals to participate in sports. Secondly, he utilized that healthiness to excel at a sport that he chose to excel at. From that point on, he used it to go to college, and then everything fell in place. I got a lot of different opportunities to meet people, to do business, make a life for myself, visit places that I probably never got the chance to visit, and enjoy the game that I participated in.